Hi, today I'm going to share with you a video on an overview of organizational development or otherwise known as OD. What is OD? An OD program is a long range planned and sustained effort that unfolds according to a strategy. The key elements are long range, planned and sustained, and strategy. The reason for OD practitioners and theorists conceptualizing programs in long range terms are several. First, changing a system's culture and processes is a difficult, complicated, and long-term matter if, you know, lasting change is to be effected. Programs envision that the system members become better able to manage their culture and processes in problem-solving and self-renewing ways. Such complex new learning, we all know, takes time. Second, the assumption is made that organizational problems are multifaceted and complex. One-shot interventions probably cannot solve such problems, and they most assuredly cannot teach the client system to solve them in such a short time period. You will know that organizational development is being undertaken when there is intentional or planned and sustained effort, system improvement, and it utilizes reflexive self-analytic methods. First, OD involves deliberately planned change as contrasted with system drifts. And like an innovative project or program, it is generally not limited to a specific period of time. To implement OD, an organizational subsystem such as a department of OD is created and charged with a specific responsibility for planning, managing, and evaluating the continuous process of organizational self-renewal. Members of such a subsystem act as inside change agents or OD development specialists, and usually they link with outside consultants to carry out their mission. The essential concept is that some fraction of an organization's resources is developed and devoted to continuous organizational maintenance, rebuilding, and expansion. The strategy? Well, the OD consultant establishes a unique relationship with client system members. Probably the most fundamental difference between organizational development programs and other organization development programs are found in the role and behavior of the consultant vis-a-vis -vis the client system. In OD, the consultant seeks and maintains a collaborative relationship of relative equality with the organization members. Now, when we say collaboration, this means to labor together. Essentially, it implies that the consultant does not do all the work while the client system passively waits for solutions to its problems. And it also means that the client system does not do all the work while the consultant is a disinterested observer. In OD, consultant and client co-labor. On the other hand, the emphasis of OD is on the system rather than the individual as a target of change. In this respect, the approach differs from sensitivity training and, well, management development. System may mean either an entire organization or a subsystem such as a department or team of a few members but still within the organization. The emphasis, however, is 
always on improving both the ability of a system to cope and the relationships of the system with subsystems and with the environment. You know, individuals, of course, often gain insights and new attitudes during such improvement processes. But the primary concern of OD is with such matters as adequate organizational communication, the integration of individual and organizational goals, the development of a climate of trust in decision making, and the effect of rewards system on morale, among others. And thirdly, OD involves system members themselves in the assessment, as well as the diagnosis and transformation of their own organization. You know, rather than simply accepting diagnosis and prescription from an outside technocratic expert, or should we say external consultant, organization members themselves with the aid of outside consultants, of course, examine current difficulties and their causes, and they participate actively in the reformulation of goals, the development of new group process skills, the redesign of structures and procedures for achieving the goals, or it could be on the alteration of the working climate of the system, and the assessment of results. The targets of OD interventions differentiate OD from other improvement strategies. The OD prescription calls for certain configurations of people as targets of OD interventions. Intact work groups, two or more work-related groups, subsystems of organizations, and total organizations. OD consultants utilize a behavioral science base. Now, this is a characteristic of the practice of OD, but it is shared by many different improvement strategies. The behavioral science knowledge base of the practice of OD contributes largely to its distinctive nature. OD is an applied field in which theories, concepts, and practices from sociology, psychology, social psychology, education, even economics, then you have psychiatry and management, are brought to bear on real organizational problems. The desired outcomes of OD are distinctive in nature and by distinctive, we mean that the desired outcomes of OD efforts are both similar to other improvement strategies as well as different from other improvement strategies. There, so there is some level of similarity and difference. OD programs and efforts are designed to produce organizational effectiveness and health, better system functioning, greater ability to achieve objectives. A scholar Michael Beer lists the aims of OD as one, enhancing congruence between organizational structure, processes, strategy, people, and culture. Two, developing new and creative organizational solutions. And three, developing the organization's self-renewing capacity. It is these self-renewal outcomes that seem particularly distinctive in the OD process. According to Warren Bennis, a prolific author on OD, OD has the following characteristics. It is an educational strategy for bringing planned changes. It is related to real problems of the organization. Laboratory, laboratory training methods based on experienced behavior are primarily used to bring change. There is a close working relationship between change agents and the people who are being changed. 
The relationships involve mutual trust, joint goals and means, and mutual influence. The change agents share a social philosophy about human values. They are humanists seeking to get a humanistic philosophy in organizations. So, the organization development strategy goes beyond the personal development strategy because it has organizational change as its explicit central focus and sees the change as its explicit um, focal outcome. Yeah, that's it. So this strategy addresses not only the training needs required for the change, but specifically people are trained accordingly with more emphasis on human relations. This is used for more general and lasting aim of developing the organization's own training function rather than accomplishing an immediate discrete change. The aim is to achieve in the organization a pervasive sense of continuous development and heightened receptivity and readiness for change. Now, the practice of OD espouses certain values. We have the humanistic values, optimistic values, and democratic values. Now, what are these values all about? What are these humanistic values? They proclaim the importance of the individual, respect the whole person, treat with people with respect and dignity, assume that everyone has intrinsic worth, view all people as having the potential for growth, and development. Now what about optimistic values? Optimistic values assume the following. People are basically good. Progress is possible and desirable. And rationality, reason, and goodwill are the tools for making progress. while the democratic values of OD practitioners are the following. They assert the sanctity of the individual, the right of people to be free from misuse of power, use of fair and equitable treatment for all, need for justice through rule of law. Why do organizations resort to OD? Now, there are two major factors which have caused the use of OD as a technique for plan change. One, training for change does not work properly only through reward structure on the job, unless there is a proper change in the environment of organization in which people work. The old mores and structures of the organization do not support training adequately, and trained people even fail to bring the desired change. This requires, therefore, a change in the organization environment so that it supports training. This is, a, this is uh, something very basic for OD. And two, in the dynamic environment, the change is extremely rapid. This requires a highly receptive and effective organization so that changes are implemented and absorbed to keep organizations survive and prosper. ODI tries to make the organization receptive and effective if used properly. As Keith Davis has observed, OD tries to free up communication, free up tightness by increasing the amount, trust, and candor of communication. 
It seeks to build problem-solving capacity by improving group dynamics and problem confrontation. So in short, it reaches into all aspects of organization culture in order to make it more humanly responsive. Besides the two factors necessitating the origin of OD, it brings some other benefits in the organization. More important of these are emphasis on rationality and objectivity, focus on shared authority, creation of social organization, emphasis on long range planning in strategy making, and taking advantage of organizational conflicts. This is a more widely dispersed improvement. Edgar Shane, the Society of Sloan Fellows Professor of Management Emeritus and a Professor Emeritus at the MIT Sloan School of Management, describes three consulting models. We have the purchase of expertise model, the doctor-patient model, and the process consultation model. Now let's talk about these three. In the purchase of expertise model, a leader or group identifies a need for information or expertise that the organization cannot supply. The leader hires a consultant to obtain the information and make a report, often including recommendations for action. Example would be surveying consumer or employee, consumers or employees about some matter, finding out how best to organize the company after a merger, or developing a marketing strategy for a new product. This is a typical approach, or this is a typical consulting approach that is widely used. Now, in the doctor-patient model, a leader or group detects symptoms of ill health in some part of the organization and calls in a consultant who diagnoses the situation, identifies the causes of problems, and then, like a physician, prescribes a cure. Examples would be um, calling in the doctor to examine low morale at a particular plant, being over budget and behind schedule on a major project, or a high-performing manager who suddenly becomes a low performer. This too is a well-known traditional approach to consultation. In the third one, in the process consultation model, here the consultant works with the leader and group to diagnose strengths and weaknesses, identify problems and opportunities, and develop action plans and methods for reaching desired goals. In this model, the consultant assists the client organization in becoming more effective at examining and improving its own processes of problem solving, decision making, and action taking. This third model is very typical in OD and it encourages greater collaboration between clients and consultants. It engages the resources and talents of the clients and strengthens clients' abilities to improve their work processes. Examples would include um, working on any of the previously mentioned problems, but using a collaborative, participative, you know, you can figure it out, or I mean, you can figure out the right answer yourselves approach. An organization development consultant typically, typically suggests general processes and procedures for addressing problems and issues. The consultant helps the client generate valid data and learn from the data. The OD consultant also is an expert on process or how to go about effective problem solving and decision making. So in this sense, OD differs substantially from traditional expert models of consulting you know, in its overall approach. Also, OD practitioners have different goals and focus on different targets compared with other consulting models.
To synthesize the characteristics of OD from various references, here is a list of its distinguishing characteristics. First, we have change. OD is a planned strategy to bring about organizational change. The change effort focuses on the human and social side of the organization, and in so doing, also intervenes in the technological and structural sides. Next is collaboration. OD typically involves a collaborative approach to change. That includes the involvement and participation of the organization members most affected by the changes. Participation and involvement in problem solving and decision making by all levels of the organization are hallmarks of OD. Then we have performance. OD programs include an emphasis on ways to improve and enhance performance and quality. Next, we have humanistic. OD relies on a set of humanistic values about people and organizations that aims at making organizations more effective by opening up new opportunities for increased use of human potential. Then we have systems. OD represents a systems approach concerned with the interrelationship of divisions, departments, groups, and individuals as interdependent subsystems of the total organization. And lastly, it is scientific. By this, we mean that OD is based upon scientific approaches to increase organization effectiveness. What are the objectives of OD then? Why do we have to resort to it? There are actually a lot of reasons. And, you know, among these are the following. First is for individual and group development. Second is development of organization culture and processes by constant interaction between members, irrespective of levels of hierarchy. Third is for inculcating team spirit. Fourth is empowerment of social side of employees. Fifth is focus of value development. Sixth is employee participation, problem solving, and decision making at various levels. Seventh is to evaluate present systems and introduction of new systems, thereby achieving total system change if required. Eighth is transformation and achievement of competitive edge of the organization. Ninth is to achieve organization growth by total human inputs, by way of research and development, innovations, creativity, and exploiting human talent. And tenth is behavior modification and self-managed team as the basic unit of an organization. For Margilius and Raya 1972, the benefits of OD is sixfold. It provides opportunities for people to function as human beings rather than resources in productive process. It gives each member of the organization opportunities to develop this full potential. It seeks to make the organization more effective in meeting all its goals. It tries to create an environment in which exciting and challenging work can be found. It gives people in organizations a chance to influence how they relate to work, the organization, and the work environment. And finally, it treats each human being as a person with a complex set of needs, all of which are important in his work and life. Finally, for this lecture, let's mention a backgrounder on how the practice of OD evolved. There are four stems of OD. Number one is T-group or laboratory training where participants learn from their own actions and the group's evolving dynamics. Then we have number two, 
which is developing reliable questionnaires, collecting data from personnel, analyzing it for trends, and feeding the results back to everyone for action planning. Three is diagnosing, taking action, then re-diagnosing, and taking new action. And four is integrate social requirements of employees with technical requirements needed to do work in provided environment. Then there is what is often tagged as second generation OD. This second generation OD pertains to what we now hear often mentioned. We have organization transformation, organizational culture, learning organization, total quality management, visioning and future search. We have business process re-engineering and quality of work life. Now, based on this overview on OD, I find it an exciting field. I hope you do too. And I encourage you to raise questions about what has just been shared in this video. Until next time.